Have you ever wondered why certain species of plants and animals live in particular parts of the world and not others? Okay, maybe you've never wondered about this. But biologists are very interested in this question because it helps us to understand how evolution has made the species we see today and how they interact with each other. Understanding these issues can then help us protect complexity in the environment, something we call biodiversity, which is important because all of humanity is dependent on the variety of natural resources around us. Some species can be found in many different parts of the world. Pigeons and sparrows are two examples of this. Other species live in just one relatively small area, and we call these endemic species. One example is the vaquita, which happens to be the world's smallest porpoise. The vaquita lives in a very small area at the top of the Sea of Cortez, but nowhere else in the world, so we say it is endemic to that area. There are only about 250 vaquitas alive today, and in order to protect them from going extinct, it is helpful to know something about why they are endemic and how they got there in the first place. But the vaquita is just one example of hundreds of marine animals that are endemic to the northern part of the Sea of Cortez, making it an important place for research and conservation. In order to better understand the larger question of why this small part of the ocean is home to so many endemics, I study a fish called a mudsucker, which is actually made up of three closely related species. The longjaw mudsucker lives both inside and outside the Sea of Cortez. The other two species, the shortjaw and delta mudsuckers, are endemic to the northern part of this sea, much like the vaquita. Several million years ago, there was only one species of mudsucker, which we call the common ancestor. Since then, it has evolved and split into the three species we see today. New species form because their genes change over time. So I look directly at mudsucker DNA to figure out how and when the three species split from their common ancestor. We know that genes change when natural selection causes living things to adapt to different environments. In different species of Darwin's finches, for example, their genes have evolved to give them different beak shapes so that each species has become very good at eating its own kind of food. But genes can also drift apart over time when a single species is separated into two groups by some physical barrier, like a deep river or a tall mountain range. In reality, new species are usually formed by some combination of both of these processes. My research focuses on when and where each mudsucker species originated, but I also want to know how important natural selection and physical separation have been during the process. As I answer these questions, I hope to relate my results to other endemic species in the Sea of Cortez, as well as other places in the world that have a lot of endemism, so that ultimately we can do the best job possible to protect valuable biodiversity.